All right, welcome back to the Powers on Sports podcast. We are set to unveil another one of our Life of the Wife episode interview series that we are doing. We're talking to ladies around the world of sports that are uh, wives of coaches or players and just all that stuff. So I'm very uh, excited to be, we're going to be talking to Erica Betcher. Erica's the wife of NFL assistant coach James Betcher, who's currently working for the San Francisco 49ers. And we're just going to talk to Erica about her uh, her journey through the world with James and coaching world and raising kids and all that good stuff. So welcome to the podcast, Erica. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right. First question I want to know, you probably know this, I bet. How many times have you moved? <laughs> Um, a lot. Um, I think this is our ninth cross country move. Cross. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nine moves. So obviously most of the time the, the misses in the, in the, in the, in the couple is kind of responsible for the moving and all that kind of good stuff. Cause James, I'm sure once you move, you got to get to the, you got to get coaching and all that stuff. Talk to me about just some of the challenges of doing all that stuff. Kind of when you're having to do it, I won't say by yourself, but you're having to organize most of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it does fall on the coach's wife. Um, sometimes we get a little help. Sometimes we don't on the moving end. Depends on when we move. Um, actually, when our, we moved out here, we waited until the summer, which typically we try to move as soon as he gets the job. So like March, we usually try to head out and get the kids acclimated to their schools. Um, here for this particular move, uh, my husband was with me and was able to help me move out. So that was nice. Um, something else that's pretty cool is the teams actually, um, they provide the packing and all of that. So okay. I can get everything nicely organized. And so I can't complain too much. Um, the moving is never easy. It is, it's a lot, but at least I have some help. So how easy is it from just the, 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 the situations of, I don't know if you guys are renting or buying in your different moves, how yeah. just that trickiness of having to decide, are we going to buy a place here? We're going to rent, how are we going to do it? And if we do have to sell a house, all that stuff that goes into that. Yeah. Um, and again, different nuances according to what part of the country we're in, right? Um, when we were with the Giants, um, that was an interesting housing market. Um, mm -hmm. It just kind of depends on, you know, where we are. So here in California, I'll say is probably the hardest um, with the market out here. It's pretty crazy. Um, so we prefer personally to rent, yeah. um, usually wherever we go. We have bought a couple times, but now we have a home base set up in Arizona. Okay. So we have a house where, you know, with all these moves, uh, we just felt like for our family, we wanted to have a home base. And right. we were out with the Cardinals for five years and really loved it there in the desert. And yep. so we decided for the kids, we wanted to build a home base there. Okay. So from here on out, we'll probably rent. Um, we're here in um, the San Fran area with the kids and they're in school here. And we are renting here. So it just kind of depends on the situation. How old are your children, if you want me asking? Yeah. So I have a 10-year-old son. I have a six-year-old daughter. And we have a one-year-old son. Uh-oh. So we are very busy right now. We're in the fun stage of life. That's right. So how do you determine when it's moving time? If Let's just say March and the kids yeah. are in school. How do you determine, do we move in March or do we wait till the end of the school year? Yeah. So having that nice span of 10 years between my kids, I've had um, some time to kind of learn from these moves, right? So sometimes you think, oh, this is going to be the right idea. And then you move and you're like, oh, I don't know. But the hardest part I'll say is just being away from my husband, um, the kids being away from their father. So for us, I think moving right away is the best case scenario. Okay. However, we did not do that this last move just because we've just gotten our house in Arizona set up. Um, and actually the, the schools here in California were still shut down. Right. So they, they were virtual, you know, the whole, um, pretty much the whole year. So it didn't make sense for us to take the kids out of school and um, bring them here for me to homeschool them basically. So we did, we were apart for four months, um, which was a challenge, but luckily we're both on the same side. Of, we're on the same coast, right? So it wasn't like we were having to go back and forth on the coast, which happens right? Um, wherever your home base or forever home might be. So you just never know. But uh, my husband came home almost every other weekend. Yeah. So we, we made it work. Yeah. So it just depends. There's so many moving parts, but we prefer to move right away. 
Um, as the kids get older, we get to that high school age. I can see how, you know, some wives stay behind and they let the kids finish out, especially if you've got that senior year kind of situation. Sure. Um, but for us, we're young and we can move around. So, you know, the Very kids cool. are young. Yeah. I'm sure you got all those moving companies and all those things on speed dial. I do. You know, we've, yeah, we've been fortunate. We've had some amazing um, companies that just really take care of us. And we do like to, you know, for, for obvious reasons, keep with the same companies sure. um, that kind of know us and we, we know we can trust them. And so, yeah. Very cool. All right. So where did you meet James at? Um, James and I, so we're, we're old school. We met in college. Okay. Um, we have been married 12 years now. What, co what college? Um, so I went to IU, uh, University of, of um, IU in, in Bloomington. Me too. I went to grad school in Bloomington. Oh, did you? I did. Okay. It's funny. I've met so many people out here in the Bay that are IU grads. Okay. You wouldn't expect. And some of them are from here. So very cool. There's a lot of IU grads out there. There you go. Fun. Yeah. Who's your, who's your daddy? Who's yes, your daddy? Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So we had, I had a good time there at IU, but um, my sophomore year is when I met, I think it was between my sophomore and junior year. I met my husband, James. Um, he was playing football at the university of St. Francis, okay. um, which is in my hometown of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. So he was playing there. Um, he's a couple years older than I am. So I think he was a senior that year that I met him. Um, so it was just a mutual friend kind of thing. There was a football party going on and um, we met there and, you know, there's all kinds of fun stories about how we ended up getting together, but we had a, a quick date. And after that, we were really never apart. So um, I drove every weekend almost from Bloomington to Fort Wayne to see him play. And, um, All right. but I didn't know at that time that he was going to be a football coach. So, so, how, how, so how did that conversation go when he said, Erica, this is kind of what I want to do. And then the odds are I'm going to have to start at the absolute bottom of the rung and who knows where it's going to take us. Right. Um, well, he was going to go to law school. Okay. So, he actually took us LSAT and he was um, accepted to some pretty good law schools. Um, again, he was a couple years older than I was. So I was doing my student teaching when this was all going on. Okay. Um, and again, my hometown is Fort Wayne where he was graduating from and his head coach at his alma mater mentioned to him that he should stay on and, and coach. He thought he'd be a great coach and um, kind of talked him into that path. And, you know, I, I was supportive. It sounded yeah. great to me. I, he's, you know, I knew that it would be a great situation for him, something that he loves and is passionate about. And, um, I didn't know where that journey would take us. So basically yeah. I was, I was saying yes to being in my hometown. Right. Cause that's where he was. He coached for gosh, now I have to think two or three years. Right. Um, he was actually O-line and then he was a special teams coordinator. And then he also was the head track and field coach. <laughs> so I didn't see much of him, even though we were in the same town, because I was, you know, I was teaching and all that. So, so your background is a teacher, correct? You yeah. got your teaching degree. So I'm, I'm a true Hoosier because I actually got my master's then at Ball State. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so obviously James started his career. I, I think he spent seven or eight years in the college world before he got an NFL opportunity. How, talk to me about the, just the, that first seven or eight years of living the college life, basically, where it's, you, you know, who knows if your next job is going to be where, and, you know, the yeah. odds are you're going to have to move around to, to, to advance and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, so I think um, our story is kind of interesting just because we literally went from, you know, NAI level all the way up to the NFL. Um, I don't think that that's very common from what I understand um division so we were it's like a division three NAIA and then he decided after a few years of coaching for his alma mater that you know he wanted to try something that was a little more you know challenging competitive and so he got an opportunity at Ball State so he was a graduate assistant for just a year at Ball State and then he moved on to the University of North Carolina and was a graduate assistant for four years wow so yeah so um I mean, those opportunities are, are hard to come by. Right. And we knew how fortunate we were to get that opportunity. Um, and at that point, we weren't married yet. We were still trying to decide, like, is this what I want to do? Like, this is kind right. of, you know, this is a crazy life. Um, and I was really passionate about teaching then. So 
I happened to find a really great job there in um, the Chapel Hill area. And so uh, we kind of planted roots there and that we love North Carolina. Um, so it was hard because five years of being a graduate assistant, making very nothing, little money. Nothing. Um, he was working, I was working, but I was actually supporting the family. You know, right. I had insurance and all of that where he didn't have that as a graduate assistant, but he got connected with some really amazing coaches there at UNC. And that's what kind of projected what we would see in, in coming into the NFL. So. Very cool. So how for yeah. you, obviously you knew kind of getting into that coaching world that he wasn't going to be around a whole lot. Yes. How, how tough is that for, you know, how have you gotten used to that? Or is it how, how tough of is it for you from a real, just a pure relationship part of things of yeah. not seeing your spouse or your, or your mate very yeah. often and knowing that's just going to be the way it is. Yes. I mean, you just kind of learn as you go, right? No one expects that that's the life that they're going to have right off the bat. Right. Um, but then you see the time that they're putting in and, and what it takes to be, to be elite and, you know, and, just have a great program and just there's just so much to it you you learn as a wife that this is just how it is and you need to support it right and you need to have your own life so I have a lot of hobbies <laughs> I was uh, being a teacher you know I put a lot of hours in yep. so um what grade, did you, what grade did you teach so I taught fourth fifth and sixth and okay. I taught for eight years and through that eight years we moved within that like Oh, at least four times. So I was teaching a new grade level, new state, um, you know, so that was a little tricky for me to find a teaching job, but it always worked out. So basically you just have to have your own life and um, you know, you just got to make it work. For you moving around so much, like you said, you're moving to different cities. How did you, obviously you had your, probably your teaching people that you got to know with the different schools that you taught at, but outside yeah. of school, how did you just to get to enjoy the city you were living in, whatever city that was. Yeah. Experience different things in the city, whether it's culturally, socially, restaurants. How was it for you to do all that stuff? When you, again, when you know you didn't have a whole lot of time with James to do that. The fun stuff, um, the fun stuff. Yeah. yeah, the fun stuff. So that's the part that I actually, I love about being a coach's wife is I get to meet so many new people. Um, of course, our coach's wife circle, just wherever we are. So with the Giants, the coaching staff of wives there, um, here at the 49ers, I'm, you, you're just like your own family and your own circle of people. Yep. Um, and if we go back into the Cardinal days, of course, um, Chris Arians, I know you've had them on her on your podcast and those were our besties on that staff. And we did everything together. Um, there are a couple of younger wives on staff that had younger kids about my same age. Okay. So we really built our own circle and explored all the things together. Um, I also, you know, just, you just kind of organically create friendships with whether it's the gym or I play tennis. Um, I do travel tennis. So a lot of my friendships come from there and then that's neat because then I can embrace the area and they can show me all the things. And then even just traveling to different clubs, I get to see the areas. So all very, kinds of different ways. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All right. So obviously when James gets his opportunity in the NFL, it's, a, it's, you know, probably both financially and just the quality of life is probably a little bit better yeah. than the college life. Just talk to me, talk to us about that transition. And at that time, you're probably thinking about having a family and I'm probably right around that time of, of your 10 year old being born and all that stuff. Yeah. Just talk about that transition going to just a different quality of life. Yeah. So we had such up and down kinds of situations with that. Um, and I'd say the middle years of, of this coaching span, um, so I was actually pregnant with my first um, when he got the job, his first division one coaching job at Ball State. I was pregnant with our first, I was finishing my master's and our head coach got fired. So we then went from there to UNH, which is like, you know, just kind of felt like a little bit of the middle of nowhere, an right. area that we never explored, right? University and of New Hampshire, University of New Hampshire. University of New Hampshire, that's right. Not the football, uh, not the football heaven of, of, of the United yeah. States. <laughs> you know what? Like, I just firmly believe that God puts you in a situation for a reason. And yeah. like, I can look back and every year there was just something that was like, okay, yeah, that's why we were there. So it was a cool experience. But at eight months pregnant, I moved from Ball State to UNH and we were driving ourselves, you know, like no movers then, no packers. So right. that's what I mean. I've learned to appreciate these things. So yeah, things might seem a little a little hard and like, oh, the coach's wife life is so hard. I can never do it. But 
you know, there's some things that I've learned to appreciate and understand. Um, so at eight months pregnant, so we move up there. We're only there for one season and Chuck Pagano got the head job with the Colts and called my husband and he didn't have like a normal like um, position coach type of position. They actually created a position for him. So he wasn't a GA, he wasn't a quality control, um, but he didn't have like a full-time assistant sit. So he kind of had to get his foot in there kind of, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and so I was still teaching. And then, so the big jump, I guess, to answer your question would be from going from um, the Colts to the Arizona Cardinals. Right. So when um, Chuck had had cancer, he was diagnosed right. with cancer. Um, you know, Bruce took over and, you know, it was a really hard time for everybody, but we wanted to do the best that we could to support Chuck. And sure. um, Bruce and my husband became very close friends and, you know, he was kind of his right hand man with everything. Um, and so Bruce then took James with him when he got the head job at, at Arizona. And um, that was our big jump, right? That's where life was a little bit easier sure. um, financially and all of those things. So um, where did that, where did that relationship with Bruce come from? Cause obviously Bruce is a little older than James. It's yeah. was it more like a father son kind of when it started yeah. out that way as a mentor. And then well, obviously yeah, we became very close. Yeah. And then, so James has that same relationship with Chuck, with coach Pagano, um, both amazing men, amazing families. Um, you know, I, it's just, that stuff's just organic. You know, they have a lot in common. They're just both ball coaches, you know, they're good old boys. They enjoy each other. They enjoy time, you know, all the things. Um, but James did a lot for, um, on the organizational side of things, right. Not just coaching, but he helped like in the day-to-day -day stuff of just all the things for being a head coach with both Chuck and, um, BA. So James knew the ins and outs of everything that needed to be done on a daily basis, right. which for a head coach, you know, that's, it's, it's a you crazy need the help. Experience. You need the help. Yeah. So James was just that he was the right-hand man there, you know, and Bruce and him just became very close. They spent a lot of hours together. Um, James was also going back and forth, um, you know, doing things for Chuck at that time. So uh, he got the opportunity to go to, to the Cardinals and, you know, we were so excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very so cool. Started. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so family wise. So when you, when you, Obviously, you and James decided this is gonna we're gonna go for it here. We're gonna get married. How was your was your family? What was your family thinking? Why didn't she meet an Indiana business school guy and go yeah. go live live the normal nine uh, to five life as opposed yeah. to this lifestyle? What was what was the thought of your folks and his folks? Oh no, they're both like our families are close, and my mom just loves James. You know, she's loved him from the day she met him. So. Uh, there was, there was no hesitation on anything. It was, okay. you all will support each other however it needs to be done. You know, we have no question and what, what can we do? So my mom's been amazing in all these moves. She's always the first one that comes out, you know, helps with the kids, helps with the organizing. Um, and James' mom was the same way. She, so we've got a lot of support there. And yeah. Now is James from Fort Wayne? Where is he no, from? James is from um, a very small town, like a one stoplight town um, right outside of South Bend, Indiana. Okay. called Lakeville, Indiana. Yep. And he has got a very big family, um, opposite of what mine is. I have one brother. He has, there's six of them. Wow. And we've had like, I don't even know, I've lost count, 36, 37 nieces and nephews. Right. On his side, yeah. Hmm. All right. So you obviously, you, you go with BA, the relationship with BA. BA has a lot of success in Arizona. You guys almost get to the Super Bowl, get to an yeah. NFC championship game. You don't quite make it. Then Bruce decides he's going to, you know, kind of retire. There's, the, the, you know, him leaving Arizona. Yeah. How did that, did that affect James, you know, emotionally and all that stuff from a man? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was tough. Um, and that was like our family, right? And we right. felt like Arizona was home. So it was tough for everybody. Um, thankfully, though, with the opportunity that Bruce gave James and coming to the Cardinals and then eventually, you um, promoting him to the defensive coordinator when Todd Bowles went to the Jets, right. which is an unbelievable uh, opportunity and faith and all of that kind of thing. Um, Cause you know, James was one of the youngest at that time. Right. Obviously he was the youngest, but he was one of the youngest coordinators, defensive coordinators in the league. Right. So that was pretty special. Um, and because of that success and because of that opportunity, 
um, that Bruce gave him, he was able to have some really great opportunities coordinating still for some other teams. Um, so that was, that was tough. It took, you know, it just seemed like those weeks and days, like just drag on of where are we going to go? What are we going to do? You know, what's going to be the best opportunity to make the pros and cons. Um, and ultimately and it, he decided. Did he involve you? Did do you, I, I'm sure you're involved, but you are, are you, do you have a pretty good say in a lot of that stuff as far as, Hey, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. Uh, like a pros and cons list kind of thing. A hundred percent. We're old school with that. Um, yeah. There's so much that goes into these decisions and they're right. never easy. And, you know, hindsight is whatever, you know, you just never know, but you just make the best choice for, you know, our kids for what's going to be best professionally for him. And obviously he's worked really hard to get to where he is, um, you know, and you just want to make that choice all around. That's going to be the best. Yeah. So then you obviously, you know, in the world of coaching, you get hired to get fired. Unfortunately, that's kind of the way it goes. How, how for you, for James, the family in a situation where you end up getting let go for whatever reason, you get let go and you're no yeah. longer the defensive coordinator or you, or you, or you maybe you have to take a, you go from a defensive coordinator to have to take a position coach job again. Yeah. How is that trickiness handled with you guys? Trickiness. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice word way to put it. Um, so this is actually our first experience. And notice I say like ours and not just yeah. his. We really do think of it as a team. As it a team. is. We're, we, we feel so fortunate to have had the journey that we've had. Um, and to, for him to do something where he's so passionate about and so good at it and a leader of men and all of those things. So it comes with the job. It comes with it. It comes with the life, all the things. Um, that was our first experience being fired. Uh, he's never had that experience. Every opportunity, um, every time we had a move, it was because it was a better opportunity for the most part. Right. Um, and with the media out there with New York, right. It can be a little brutal. So, you know, as a coach's wife, you learn, just stay off, stay off all the media stuff and just live your life. And it, it was hard, but you can't take it personal. And when you know, you're having a losing, losing season for whatever reason, a lot of times it's completely outside of your control. Right. Right. Um, you just have to, you have to look to what's next. Yeah. How do you, are your kids, are your, are your, are your, your kids, big football fans, obviously because of the life or do they, are they kind of do their own thing or what? Talk to me yeah. about your kids a little bit as far as what they love to do. Yeah. So Colton is, he's, he's special when it comes to being dad's little sidekick. Colton's 10 and he has been to every football game since he was born. Okay. So whether that was him and my, his little baby Bjorn carrier and, University of New Hampshire times when he was first born like he was in the stands every game and like I have the cutest pictures of him at the Colts like number one you know when he was one being there in the stands he was on the sidelines kicking uh field goals with Adam Vinatieri like he has such awesome cool memories and things that he's gotten to do because of being a coach's kid and he he dies by every play more so even than I do. Um, he wants like, there were some years where he'd have his dad make him like a little chart with all the plays on it. And he would actually bring it to, but they weren't real plays, but he'd bring it to the game and he'd be like, you know, he thinks he knows what's going on. And is it cover two or are we blitzing? Are we, are we blitzing exactly, or is it a cover yeah. two? It's hard. That's probably one of the hardest parts is watching your child know how important each and every game is and how hard sure. their dad works. Yeah. Um, you know, in the firing part, that part's really hard for a child too. Sure. Um, to understand. Because I'm sure now he's at the age where he understands what's going on. And when yeah, we have to move, it's not because we, and all of that. Yeah. It's not because so we want to move. Yeah. Yeah. It makes them resilient and makes them adaptable. Right. So yeah. he's, he has a hard time with it sometimes with these losses and things, but they, you know, they roll with the punches. But so how is mom as a fan? Are you, are you living and dying every play? Yeah, I both. Yeah, both. I'm, I'm a little bit of both. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm yelling and hooting, hollering in the stands, um, but not too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you listen to the Powers on Sports podcast. I'm talking with Erica Betcher, the wife of James Betcher, who's an assistant coach with the San Francisco 49ers. He's been in n- numerous stops around the college world and the in the NFL. And we're just talking to, to Erica about her about her journey through the life of coaching with uh, with James and such. All right, let's talk about a normal game week, a, a week like this. What um, 
you know, is what days of the week do you get to see James more than others during a normal, we're in week four of the NFL season. Yeah. So we had kind of a rough start just as far as we had two away on the road games. Okay. And they did that whole stop where they went to the Greenbrier, which we yep. actually had done with the Cardinals. So he was literally gone for two weeks straight. Yeah. Um, so that's always a little bit of a, like, you know, we had come right out of training camp and then we're going straight into two weeks. Um, road trip, two week road yeah. trip. Two weeks road trip. Yeah. So we went for, you know, a good two weeks without seeing him. But then when we have a home game week, right. Um, it's kind of like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we know we're not going to see him. Right. Because right? he's going in at like 40, 430 in the morning and he's getting home about midnight. Wow. Sometimes. Um, yeah. So I'm usually asleep when he goes in and I'm asleep when he uh, gets home. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday, he's home earlier. You know, we can catch the end of Thursday night football <laughs> and uh, he goes and picks my daughter up from gymnastics. Okay. And then Fridays are kind of like, we call them the date night in the NFL, you know, um, this Friday in particular though, was a special Friday last night. Uh, we actually had the linebackers over and a couple of coaches okay. we had them over here at our house and, um, cook them dinner a little dinner and yep. yeah so how neat is it to uh, now are do you are you do you kind of i know you obviously had to develop relationships with the, with the position that he's coaching do yeah you, you try to create a relationship with their girlfriends or their wives you know yeah. they you know during the year type thing or is it more coaches coach coaches wives and then separate from the players and their wives yeah I think it's a little different um, in the NFL. Just we don't have as much interaction with the coach's wife or with the player's wife, excuse me. Um, however, just naturally sometimes, you know, especially since we're younger on the younger end, um, and it, especially when James first got his coordinating job, a lot of his players were his same age. Right. So we have a lot in common, the families, and, and we would meet at like training camp or we would, um, with the Cardinals, we had a family, uh, like a walkthrough on Saturdays. And so we'd see the families there. And there's been a couple wives over time here in the NFL that I've gotten to be close with. And, um, you know, our kids play together and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it just, it depends. Sometimes, you know, the girlfriends, the wives, they don't always live where the players are either. Right. So, yeah. How has it, how, how, how has it been with the different teams you've been with? Typically maybe the head coach's wife kind of takes the lead with organizing things with the, with the other coaches wives. How has that been for you as far as working? Obviously, you've worked with Chris Arians. You were in yeah. New York. You've been, you know, obviously now in San Francisco. How has it been with different coach, head coaches' wives kind of facilitating some relationships? Yeah, I've been super fortunate. The wives, the head coaches' wives that we've been lucky to be a part of are, like, amazing women. And I'm fortunate because I, I get to learn from those women and also be a part of something special with the wives circle, right? So um tina pagano when we were with the colts amazing amazing um special being able we just did a lot of stuff together we had a bible study um that tina hosted at her house you know we did a lot of things together and then same thing with the cardinals chris was the head head coach's wife and um same thing we did she's amazing so lots of lots of lunches at her home yeah they threw uh, quite a few amazing staff parties at their home. And then also we had a Bible study with a group of wives there too. Um, for me, like the Bible studies have been, you know, really special and just getting to know the wives better and, and continuing to grow in my faith and that kind of thing. So I'm staying here. So everywhere we've been, it's been amazing. Very so, cool. Yeah. How many times a year do you typically get to try, do you got, does each team typically bring the, the wives with the, with the team once or twice a year on a road trip? How does that typically work? um on in the nfl yeah um honestly i have not had that experience okay we've not done any away wives trips like all together that was organized by the head coach's wife okay um i know sometimes if, if you're going to a west a very nice west coast place or something sometimes yeah. they'll bring once a year they'll bring all the oh, coaches yeah, absolutely. Wives i remember that a little bit more in college okay um, but we didn't know we haven't done that and you know, with COVID times and all, I mean, there was, sure. I know we had talked a little bit with the Giants, um, uh, his wife, Pat Shermer's wife, amazing lady. I know that we had some plans of doing some things that got side railed, you know, right. so yeah, sometimes, sometimes the wives get to do all that kind of stuff together and sometimes it doesn't work out. So speaking of COVID, how difficult was last year knowing 
what a high risk that you had to, I mean, you, you almost couldn't, he was getting tested every day. You had to be very yeah. careful about the kids and not spreading and all that kind of stuff that went with COVID. How difficult yeah. it was last year in addition to a normal, what it would be in a normal year, even more so last year. Yeah. And part of this year. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's been crazy. We actually, my, my husband took last year off. Okay. So once, once we left the Giants, um, you know, we weighed some things, pros and cons list. He still had another year. Um, so we just decided to take last year off, which ended up being a blessing in disguise. We had our son. Yep. He was there for that whole experience. Um, but then coming a lot of, so with the 49ers specifically, they ended up, uh, Santa Clara shut down their stadium. Right. So they ended up coming to where we were and they were sharing the Arizona Cardinals stadium. Right. Um, but I mean, the stories are so from, and I was talking to some of the players, um, girlfriends last night and them telling the story about how they basically spent Christmas in a hotel, you know, in the desert and, and they made that work and same for some of the coaches wives because they wanted to be together. So, right. um, but now coming into just the, the COVID testing and what happens when you test, I mean, it's just crazy. Right. And then our friends at the box, you know, that's, that's our people. That's like our whole staff from Arizona almost and hearing, you know, I have a couple very close friends still that I talk to and hearing their stories about, you know, they couldn't do a lot during that time, that Super Bowl run and how restrictive that was for them even as the family and not the actual coach. Yeah, I spoke, I spoke to um, one of the Bucks assistants. One, I'm based in Tampa. So I spoke uh -huh. to one of the assistant, uh, that one of the current assistant's wife, and she was just telling me, uh, you, and you may know uh, Todd McNair's wife, Lynette. I don't know if you know Lynette McNair. I Lynette. don't know her, yeah. Okay. She's the running back coach's wife. And then I also spoke with one of the uh, defensive assistant coach's wives and just how crazy it was during the Super yeah. Bowl and how yeah. you couldn't – you know, the, the, the one, one of the ladies was having a child last year and she was like, my husband gets tested every freaking day. You better let him in the delivery room. I know. It, gets, I it mean, was scary last year. Yeah. And for us, when we left New York, it was, it was like the height of COVID in New York. Like, right. I mean, it was crazy. Right. And so we were thinking about that in our head too. Where do we want to go from here? They, in the New York city hospitals, they weren't allowing the, the spouse, the partner to be there. So I don't know, you know, when we, our son was born in July, uh, maybe things changed, but yeah, it was, it was scary. Right. It was, it was very different. And had he been coaching, I'm sure, you know, but he wouldn't have been there probably. Right. So. right. All right. So let's talk about the off season a little bit. What do you guys, you know, when you and James have some time, you know, it's obviously a little bit different off season schedule in the pros that it is in college with no recruiting and all that stuff. So a little bit more downtime for him and a little bit more. Absolutely, what do you, yeah. What do you guys like to do family trip wise vacations just together as a, as a, as a unit when you have some free time? Yeah. So that, that six weeks ish, depending on where you're at. Um, sometimes that's a little shorter, sometimes it's a little longer is super special. And it's, it's kind of a unique situation, right? Most people don't have in their life. Like we know we're going to be off this six weeks out of the summer. So you can do some pretty special things. Um, we have kind of set up, a tradition of, because we want to be around our family. My family and his family are all still in Indiana, two hours apart, and um, we've got a big family. So we, we try to center our plans around being around them. Um, and kind of our tradition is we rent a lake house and all the family comes to us and we have our boat there and we all get to just kind of hang out and have fun for, for a good four weeks or so. And then we um, have a home base now in Arizona. So I'm sure we'll be out there a little bit but it's pretty hot during those months. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. a little hot during the, the off season there. Right. That's good. That's good. So yeah. how is, how is James as a dad I, during the season? I know there's not a lot of time, but obviously yeah. with the advent of zoom and FaceTime yeah. and all that stuff, yeah. is he pretty involved and you guys get to at least speak to him. And, and the, ad, you know, the beauty is 25, yeah. 20 years ago, you couldn't do that with things yeah. you can do today, as far as at least keeping in touch and seeing each other every oh, yeah. day. Yeah. James is amazing. He, with everything that he has on a day-to-day -day basis, he always makes time for the kids. And so even on those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, every night, he's FaceTiming the kids right before they are going to bed. Right. Um, I think with him having that extra special year off with, with our youngest, it, it was really hard for him to go back, you know, in that full swing. And then, um, so he just, he, he makes it a point to FaceTime him every night because that age, you know, they grow so much. And, um, uh, right now he's out with them right now he tries to make it to their soccer games um 
my son plays flag football, of course. And they have, it's kind of cool. They have like a 49ers kids league that they put the kids on on the same team. So okay. um, he's able to make it to his Friday night games. Okay. So he's playing about 6.30. So his dad's there watching them, coaching them up. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you guys get, I won't say, I mean, I won't, you're probably not celebrities, but people know who you are in these different places that you've been over the years. How has that been for you? To kind of where you're kind of in the spotlight a little bit more where everybody says, oh, that's Mrs. That's the yeah. coach's wife or that's, you know, she's a coach yeah. for the Colts or the 49ers or the Cardinals. How, how has that been for you? Yeah. Oh, raising, I, the, raising the kids and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even I'm just a normal person like anybody else, you know, like it doesn't it doesn't phase us at all. Um, you know, some people think it's cool and some people don't know anything about football. So. You know, it's a good conversation topic sometimes, of course. Right. Um, my son, out of anybody, thinks it's the coolest and wants to tell everybody what his dad does, <laughs> you know? Right. So. And sometimes you got to say, sometimes you got to tell him, hey, don't tell everybody. Yeah, right. That's that's what my husband's like. Come on. You don't get, you don't need to tell everybody all of our business. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's cool. You know, it's fun. So. All right. So talk to me a couple more things. We'll get you out of here. Talk to me about um, just... Moving forward, I mean, obviously, are you, do you envision yourself going back into the teaching world? Or are you going to kind of stay at home with the kids while they're, you know, raising the kids? How do you yeah. kind of even see your your future and, you know, forget football, just your future as a, as a, as a growing woman? Yeah, um, that's kind of fluid. Um, I miss being in the classroom. And I did some consulting things for a software company. So working from home, you know, once all of them are in school full time, that might be a possibility. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, we spread them out pretty good. So I've still got about four years before I have them all in school. Right. Um, but right now I'm just really enjoying volunteering at the school. They've got a great school here and it's fun you know, going into the classroom, doing literacy stations and being a part of, of their community and being involved. So. All right. Last question. What are, what are some, are there any charitable things that you and James really believe in that you guys try to be involved in the different cities? I know Chris Arians is very involved. Yeah with her kids foundation and mm -hmm. are there any causes that are really important to you and James that you guys try to contribute to when you can? Yeah, absolutely. Um, being with the Arians, um, we got super involved with CASA and it's, it's very near and dear to our hearts now. Um, it was so special what they did and how they built their foundation there. And right. we kind of got to see that progression over the five years of how that grew and then got to know all the people behind the scenes and um, really special experience for us because eventually we'd love to create our own foundation or support um, the cost of cause for sure. Um, so depending on where we move to, we do support the CASA there. Um, yeah. We were up in, in the Giants, you know, I got connected with them. My mom is actually a CASA. So that's special. Um, and I get to see things from a CASA's point of view through her. Right. You know, and it's such a such an amazing selfless thing that these costs do. And I've I've gotten to see it firsthand through Chris and um, have met some of the children she's mentored, you know, so we, we wholeheartedly support that. And we're so proud of Chris and Bruce for all their work there. And um, we do a lot for for kids back in uh, my husband's hometown. Um, basically anything that involves youth that we can support or do. Um, in my husband's hometown, the football program, cheerleading program there were hit hard, right, with the COVID. And um, we didn't want any child to not be able to participate in a sport. So we wanted to fund that program um, for his hometown. Very good. So that nobody had to worry about paying for anything, you know. So anything we can do for the youth and give back and our school, wherever we are, our schools. It, we're pretty passionate about that. Yeah. Very good. Well, it's been a real pleasure, Eric. I really appreciate the time and uh, yeah. keep up, keep up, keep up living that great life. I know you're out in San Fran now and who knows where the future yeah. will take you guys. And like I said, James, I'm well aware of James as a coach. He does a great job coaching defense and all yeah, that stuff. You. And I know you, I know you're doing a great job raising the family and being very supportive of them. So yeah, I thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and uh, yeah, we'll hopefully get to talk down the road maybe. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Erica. Have a great weekend. Good. Go, go 49ers when they play the Seahawks. Seahawks that's right. Keep the Seahawks. It's a big one. Yes. Right?
There you go. All right. Have a great week and enjoy the game. All right. Thank you. We'll be Bye. right back. We'll be right back. <laughs>